It's no secret that Nigeria is the largest economy in Africa. What's more to her? With over 3 billion metric tons of iron ore deposits found in Kogi, Enugu and Niger states, an estimated 10 million tons of lead zinc veins spread across many states in Nigeria. Over 7.5 million tons of barite in Taraba and Bauchi states, an abundance of lithium and gold in Nasarawa, Ogun state and many more, Nigeria is blessed with a diverse mix of mineral deposits. The Nigerian government, through the Ministry of Solid Minerals Development, is setting the pace to reposition Nigeria as an economic powerhouse. Join us every Monday, 16.30 GMT, and on Saturday, 9 hours GMT, for the program Uncovering Nigeria's Hidden Gems. Uncovering Nigeria's Hidden Gems. Where we highlight the activities of the solid mineral sector to discover the vast natural resources of the country and know more about the sector. Remember, Mondays at 16.30 GMT and Saturdays at 9 hours GMT. Uncovering Uncovering Nigeria's Nigeria's Hidden Gems. Gems. I am Ulushe Gomoni Yege, a professor of geology and the director general of the Nigerian Geological Survey Agency. Uh, let me use this privilege to appreciate the effort of the engine of economic diversification in Nigeria, and that is in person of the president of the country. President Bola Ahmed Tinumbu, and uh, also the driver of the engine for economic diversification in Nigeria, and that is the Minister uh, for the Ministry of Solid Minerals Development, Dr. Henry Dili Alake, is the driver for the engine. Uh, I really appreciate the effort, and I think uh, we couldn't have needed uh, any other individual other than these people uh, for now as a country. Our main mandate revolves around production or data generation, the generation of uh, geoscientific data that will uh, encourage investors for adequate economic diversification. So uh, in a cardinal manner, we can say that we have the aspects of mineral exploration as one of our cardinal mandates. We also have the aspect of production of geological maps, which is uh, uh, a product of geological studies. We will also have the angle of uh, dissemination of this geoscientific data uh, to appropriate quarters, both national and internationally, uh, that we enhance investment by investors. Um, We are also mandated in line with our exploration data to provide information on um, uh, geohazards, information on uh, other geological related uh, activities that also includes barren activities. Ah, fine. We, the agency, as you may know, uh, is about the oldest agency in Nigeria, even though it became an act and establishment in 2006, but it has been existing over 100 years. And meaning that the activities of the agency uh, have been on ever since this time, and the data has been uh, uh, generated. Uh, we know that we were started off by uh, international organizations such as uh, British Geological Survey and uh, all of that. So we have uh, 
be carrying out this mandate of mineral uh, search, which, which also means exploration. And uh, we have been archiving our data. And uh, like I said, this data is essentially uh, to assist us in understanding the, uh, the enormous resource that we have and also uh, using this as a baseline to um, advertise our country and ourselves as a mining uh, country. Development or expansion or improvement or enhancement of mining industry is a function of geoscientific data that are available for the players in the industry to use. And that is why uh, I both to say, as it happens in other developed countries, that the strength, the economic strength of any country is a function of the attention that is given to the mineral resources domicile in that country. The amount of information data generated by the agency, that is NGAC, will determine the rate of expansion of the uh, mining industry. For now, the information that we have in terms of occurrence, in a way, is trickling, I use the word trickling, is trickling investors. Because that has been able to also, you know, uh, yes, I invite some investors, you know, we have some uh, lithium processing plants in some part of the countries now, because of the level of information that we have. Yeah, you know, you see, thank you for that question on tremor, you, and the seismic equipment that we use, the equipment that we use to track occurrence. You will recall that um, we gave, uh, through the ministry, we gave a press uh, release on this occurrence the last time, that's about a month or thereabout ago when this happened. In the... So, to go to your question, yes, we have to. Uh, basic equipment that we use. One is the monitoring equipment and the other is the uh, evaluatory, I call it evaluatory, you know, uh, equipment. Now the monitoring equipment I mean is the seismic equipment. The one that we use that is the GURAP, the GURAP uh, machine or system, okay, is uh, a world-class uh, seismic monitoring equipment, okay? And the other arm is our, uh, we call them uh, gravimeter. That is uh, the one that we use to measure the gravity uh, anomalies, the gravity behavior uh, within or uh, around an area of suspect, okay? So the we use the G, GC, Six. That is a, a digitized and a world-class gravimeter uh, that we use. Now we also have the old one, the Lacostra machine, or equipment gravity uh, equipment gravity measuring equipment. Okay, so we use the combination of these two to uh, monitor. I mean to evaluate occurrence and also monitor the activities. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What we do is to do monitoring. Now our seismic, our Gura that I mentioned is we have a station at uh, Pampe there uh, around the, within the radio uh, Aso radio, Aso radio. Aso radio, yes. So we have the equipment there and we do a uh, daily monitoring of this event like the one that happened before we were actually on point because we we're actually taking our readings okay and we noticed when the thing was coming I when the signal was uh, coming higher and higher and uh, so even before people start talking we were aware 
but we wanted to take sufficient statistics mm. to be able to say, oh, this is how it is going, and this is when it's uh, like that. So, uh, the same thing we are still doing right from that time that the tremor occurred in uh, uh, Pampe, Katampe, up to this morning. I've we'll been doing a daily monitoring of the of the seismic uh, signals, mm. and so, of course, what we do is, well, when if there are kind of obnoxious uh, or kind of high level uh, signal, what we do is to alert our ministry, okay, which in turn will alert the community and the whole uh, nation in general. So, but up until now, like I said, this morning, the the signals have been gained to more or less within the less than the threshold and uh, we we are on top of it. The ministry under the our Hebrew minister, Dr. Nidhi Alake, has uh, no defined the policy that we promote economic diversification through mineral uh, resources enhancement and all of that. And I think. It is clear, like uh, uh, it's also say it's, it's a common saying anyway, and also of course it's in the Bible that sin is believing, you know. Uh, so we have seen what is happening right now. We have seen the benefit that even in little time, less than 14, uh, 15 months of stay of the government, we have seen already the good hands, especially with, uh, solid minerals. So uh, to say less, I mean to say that uh, you know to talk about the policy whether working or not working i think i mean whether good or not good i think to me is saying less about something that is already at the top for instance we we we, we can see now the value chain addition you understand now? that we are having is an offshoot of the policy that is being implemented now we are talking about uh what do you call it processing of commodities in nigeria which was not so by law at a time before our raw materials are taken from here exported and returned to us a refined commodity now the country is suffering that does not promote job that does not promote socialization. That not, does not promote economic diversification. You know, but now we have a policy that says, look, extract and process. Okay, I will just pick that one. We have a, a, a policy that says now extract and process. So when you are processing, because it's in our own. So after you have done your processing, we don't say that you cannot export. But I mean export. But please extract here. And process it here. Yeah. Like I said earlier, we now have implementation of this or evidences of this. In Nasarawa now, we have a lithium processing plant. Now, that will cause citizens of Nasarawa to get employment. People will now be buying it at a cheaper rate instead of them processing it and uh, bringing it back to Nigeria. You know, most of these things they are used in so many areas. Uh, in electronics, in uh, so many gadgets, okay, and we, we we import all of these things. But you see, I think where we are going as a ministry, as a government, is that over time, all these our commodities they can now be processed and also packaged, not only being processed now. You know, now is mine and process, isn't it? But now. I know the next level by this government I can see is that it will not only stop at mine and process, it will now be mine, process, and package. So that we begin to also do phones, produce phones in Nigeria, produce this in Nigeria, you know, all of those things. Because we have the resources, the mineral resources that can be used. My vision is that we are able to make available, detailed, sufficient, 
economic driven, investment driven, geoscientific data that will be relevant globally and position Nigeria as a power, as a figure, as an entity in mining industries or mining communities. Miners, associations or the Society of Miners, NGSA, the ministry, the government, everybody, I think we are one. And once we have that mind, whatever we are doing, we'll be able to do it in the interest of tomorrow.